Hello, hello everybody, welcome to today's stream. Today, we're actually doing art today. Oh my goodness, we haven't done that type of thing. So it's it's very strange to me. Like, <laughs> oh my goodness, it's all good. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I got a message. All right, it's just wild because I don't think I've ever done like an art stream, art stream, boop. Uh, but yeah, no, this is, oh, this is different. <laughs> Yeah, how's everyone's day been? We're gonna be doing uh, art stuff. So this is my line art type of thing, but I think it saved the other stuff. So I think I'm just gonna toss this. Ha ha, I'm gonna sob in the corner. This is my sketch. So basically what I need to do with this one is I need to, of course, line it and then I have to color it and then I have to animate it. Or I'm gonna color it last, but you know what I mean. But still, it's been a hot minute. I say it's been a hum and I've been animating all day. This is the part that I've been doing. Spoilers, now this is like the second thing that you see. Spoilers are gonna be coming in like five minutes. Hello Dov, how you doing my dude? I think it was really funny today. Cause I had, I had done the usual like, what should we do type of thing? Like, should I take a break and do something else? Or should I work on the thing? And there are nine votes. It was clean, clean across the board what we were gonna do today. Nine votes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. We don't normally get that type of a clean like result either. That's wild to me. Yeah, everybody was like, lace work on your final. Do you do your homework? Go work on your homework. Oh my gosh. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna grab uh Dylan real fast. Because yeah. I'm good. How are you, Lace? I have been vibing my dude. Oh my gosh, everybody moved out and stuff. Oh my goodness, it's wild. Here, one sec. Hello! Ew. Oh, you are so loud. Let me fix this. Must resist urge to scream. No, 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 no. You don't, don't hurt, don't hurt their ears, please. Their precious, precious ears. Lace boat, do homework. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so the, the, the vote today was, should I play video games? Should I play video games or should I do my homework? And everybody was like, Homework. <laughs> so that's the vibe. I hear all that. I am. Uh, I'm trying to try to set this up to be just chat, so I can see chat as well. There we go. Yeah. All right. So how's the homework going? Good. I have I'm to here. redo this one scene because I had done it in class. And uh, it was just Summerlin like poking at the fireplace or something. And I had done it in class, but then oh, I didn't save it correctly. Uh. And now I'm sad. And then, I, and then I procrastinated working on this specific one for so long because again, I had done it in class and I had finished it in class and then I didn't, and then I didn't save it right. And then I was sad. I, I get you. Honestly, you and I are both working on stuff we've been procrastinating on. Good. Uh, you know how I moved my new apartment at the beginning of the week? Yeah. I'm just now unpacking. Yeah, I know. I saw your stuff the other day. Yeah. Also, I don't know if I should have the camera turned on or not so everyone can see the drawing pen, because I'm just drawing. This is like... <laughs> just nothing but drawing pen. Yeah, no, this is wild, guys. This is the first time you've seen me use the drawing pen for what it was actually made for. Sacrilege. Sacrilege. Oh my goodness. There we go. Ah, uh, yes. Let me just collect the leaves soon enough. I will respark the war. Oh god. Um, also, little heads up. We are like, I think five away and stuff. And if we hit that five, I will progress, not procrastinate. I'll, I'll do it. I'll like, considering this is going to be done for tomorrow type of thing. This is clearly being done by a mouse less S. Oh my goodness. Yes, definitely done by a mouse. Hey, Dev. But yeah, so you right. know. Hey, I got a question before you. I have been asking. I've been asking a bunch of people this. It's all this online. I want your opinion, right? Yeah. The devil appears and wants to make a deal with you, right? Yeah. He will give you a hundred million dollars right now into your bank account, no questions asked. Okay. 
But to oh, keep this money, you have to pay a maintenance cost. Maintenance right? cost? Yes. Now, this maintenance cost isn't monetary. You have to do something. Once a week, you need to drive around. Just drive around somewhere. You don't. You get to pick where. In a limo, sticking out of the uh, of the sunroof with a basket full of water balloons filled with champagne. And while you're doing this, you have to pelt any homeless person you see while yelling, how do you like a taste of the good life? Just making fun of them for being poor and homeless. Okay, but he, like, he just gave you some money. That's not a renewable resource. Uh, but yes, but he gave you a lot of money and you can do whatever you want with it. No, it's still a dumb deal. You can deal. put money into something. Yes, but it's, you, you're neglecting the amount of money he's giving you. Hello, Death. Oh, Hello, but it, it gets worse. There's, it gets worse. It's another part of this deal. Uh, the homeless people will be gunning for you after you do this. Well, yeah. Okay, wait, you have to, like, throw, like, you throw champagne and water balloons at them. Doesn't mean that you yes. also can't wow. put money, like, attached to them. <laughs> Just attach a hundred dollar bill to each of them in a note saying, I'm sorry, sad face. I'm sorry, I had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's ways that you can get around this without being a terrible person. Oh, I should also mention that if you fail to do the water balloon thing, at any point you go a week without doing it, the devil will show up and drag you to hell immediately. Ah, lovely. So, uh, you... So, I, I take it your definitive answer would be no to this, though, right? Yeah, probably. I would be like, yo, I need a better deal than this. This kind of sucks. You know, I gotta say, you were the first person to say no before I mentioned the homeless people trying to kill you. Yeah. It was it was the threat of death by homeless that got a lot of my friends to stop it. It's not the, I'm oh. going to be a complete and utter ass to the homeless, it's the, the homeless are going to try to kill me afterwards that they stop, that stop them. Oh my gosh. All right, we're gonna open this question up to the, the chat as well. What would you guys do? Would you accept the money and pout the homeless? Can I have a discount? Or... Oh my gosh. That's a good one. I like that one. That's a good one, Dov. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, sure. I'll give you a discount. You can fill the water balloon with cheap beer. Cheap beer? That's even better, honestly. That's even more of an insult. Oh my gosh. Only Dav gets that discount, though. That's the Dav discount. That is the Dav discount. Oh my gosh. Alright, let's see. The point where I stopped is where I had to do ho do work. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you see, you had me until I had to do something. You had me Fair. until I had to do something. Okay, what if you go to, like, uh go to a city that doesn't have a lot of homeless. Well, then you have to work a lot harder to find the homeless. If you can't find any homeless, that's a failed maintenance cost and you get dragged to hell. Okay, okay, I have a question. What What is the maintenance, though? How many homeless do you have to pill? Just one. Just, just you one? Have have to get one? Just one, but if you see any, it must be pelted. Basically, if you see only one homeless person, you only have to pelt that one homeless person. But if you come across any other after that one, they have to get pelted too. Hmm. Interesting. The minimum is one, but any that you see. I don't. Ha I haven't heard enough to make the decision. Okay. What if you don't uh, do? What if you just don't work? Can I take the money? My money to hell. Ooh, can you take your money to hell? Is is the currency of money still useful in hell? Uh, we're gonna go with the, um... What's, what's that game? Um... What's that one fucking game? Manual Samuel, I think it is? I have no idea. Uh, we're going with those rules of, uh, your actual money has no worth in hell. So the money is useless if you get dragged to hell? Yes. Interesting. I have a solution, but it's really long. All right, Dov, hit me with it. I think there Give is a solution. little too much effort to do this and too much risk. 
too much risk of forgetting once a week. I feel like at first it would be a kind of a risk, but then like after yeah, a no, while, no. after you get into the routine... After a while it's just, oh yeah, I go to the bank on Monday, I stop by the homeless shelter on Tuesday, pelt them all with balloons, I go to fucking, I go visit my grandma on Wednesday, it just, it just becomes part of the routine. It becomes part of the routine after a little bit, yeah. I, I defend my home from the onslaught of the homeless trying to murder me on Friday. You can you probably get yourselves like a bodyguard or two. Yeah, it'd be perfect. Except you have a hundred million dollars. The honestly, the defense of the homeless people is probably the easiest. Like because on the low end, just buy a gun, you're fine. On the high end, you can fucking hire the Blackwater Association to protect your ass. Yeah, you got that much money. Uh, just unalive the homeless who's actually. Oh wait, you you just That's need what? one homeless. You just need one homeless. <laughs> so you pretty much you solve homelessness, but like there will always be homeless. So like yeah, you're like they'll be like, "Oh, this person, you know, solved homelessness and like given hundreds of people homes and stuff." But like if they see a homeless person, they're going to shove they're going to throw water balloons with the, at them. No, it only has to be the one so we think while you're yeah, doing yeah. the maintenance cost. Yeah, yeah, You don't exactly. have to throw water balloons at anybody you see, any homeless people you see. It's just while doing the maintenance thing. Yeah, exactly. So after a while, you could be like, yeah, America's sweetheart, gonna go and pelt lock some homeless- <laughs> You wanna come buy with Buy a homeless guy and lock him in your basement. Well, if he's locked in your basement, then the basement is his home and he's no longer homeless. Oh, he's just true. Kidnapped. Hmm. Interesting. We have solutions here. Oh, you were reading chat. Okay, thank you. Yes. You're not the only one who can read Sorry, chat caps. now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. But then you wouldn't be homeless! Sorry, caps. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Never also, apologize everybody for moved out. I have a story for you. Oh my goodness. Just lock him in Go your ahead. garden without any roof. Oh, that'd be so mean, though. <laughs> Just chain him to the fence. Oh my gosh. I have a story for you. So, so the other day, my, my sweet mate had some friends over. And they were getting drunk and doing this and that type of thing. Because, you know, that's it's college. She's literally a part of like she's been to frat parties. She has she's like in a sorority and stuff like that. Okay, she she does this type of stuff like on weekends, and you know little old me does not do that type of stuff. So, really, I had no idea. I figured you'd be getting sloshed every week. No, um, but still. So you know they. It, they had their friends come over, you know, she had her friends come over, they were all just kind of hanging out and doing stuff. And, um, they were getting drunk. One of them was, like, an actual child and should not get drunk. Actually, they were- actually, my roommate's child. Too young. Type of thing, should not get drunk. Um, you know, that type of thing. Um, not outing myself at all. But still, you know, I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna get in way, I don't care. Um, no, I gotcha. But what had happened was was that I was just chilling in my room because I was just chilling in my room. One of the girls kept dragging people into the bathroom with her because, you know, of course she was dragging people uh -huh. into the bathroom with her. And, um... Which turns of service, gotcha. No, 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 not, 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 uh... I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't know. If somebody's drunk and constantly dragging people to the bathroom, I can only assume it's one of two things. It's either vomit or that. She didn't want to pee alone. Anyways, so so she dragged some people into the bathroom with her. And at one point in time, I hear like a, like a loud like clink type of sound. And like things go quiet and then things get loud again. And I'm like, I have no idea what just happened. I'm not going to question it type of thing. And uh, I'm sitting here and like, like, you know, I'm sitting in my room type thing and like it's getting late and I was like, all right, I kind of want to, you know, go to bed. So I go into the bathroom because I need to brush my teeth and stuff and like, you know, y you know, use the bathroom type of thing. And you know what happens? What happens? The toilet makes a weird sound 
when you like at all touch it okay and i'm very confused about this later like the next day i go and investigate they broke it off the tile how the fuck did they break the toilet I off don't the know. tile <laughs> they broke the toilet off the tile <laughs> okay uh for, okay so for both of my assumptions that raises some questions for assumption number one, how forceful was the vomit to break the fucking toilet? Or she how wasn't even vomiting. Was vomiting. She was like. For assumption number two, she my just fucking god, doctor. Oh my goodness, the guy that they invited over, like they they did not care. Like he did not care like, at all. He was like just there because like she kind of forced him to be there. It was so sad. All right, what did Dobbs say? Oh my goodness, I'll continue uh, this after Dobbs thing. Let's see. Have a good friend or random person that you can pay money, pay with the copious amounts of money to leave their house and live on a single street corner, a tiny city that you buy the rights to. Every week you just drive into the one city and you pelt your uh, one consenting good friend with a single balloon and yell at them. That's it. You go home and make sure that your friend has all the necessities, including shelter that cannot be considered a house, for example. And you give them a really big tent, you know, not like circus size, but like a portable washroom that gets them clean every day. And it, it, by most people, you pay to do it and it's probably some amount of money. Yeah, that would work as long as you don't run into any other homeless people. Because remember, if you go out- Oh, I have a question. Oh, there's there. Can, can you tell people? Yeah, it, no, there's if you tell no, your friend. Nothing, yeah, no, there's nothing in here saying that you can't tell people, but would anybody really believe you if you said that you're pelting them with water balloons because the devil told you? That's very you just true. think you're crazy. That's very true. Seriously, go, go out into your college campus, pelt somebody with a water balloon, and tell them the devil told you to do it. No, I'm not doing that, man. Dude, okay, how dude, about dude, your ginger I, I know for a fact that we have crazy religious people on campus. I ain't doing that. How about your how about your asshole ginger friend from high school? I hit you with a water balloon. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to do not hit me with a water balloon. I think he would. Look, if you if you can lob a water balloon that fucking far. I would love a water balloon that far. It would be hilarious. You're gonna be standing outside in like a week or two, and then you're just gonna get hit with a water balloon. This is gonna have a hundred dollars taped to it and just sorry, sad face. Uh, <laughs> How dare you be homeless here? Okay, you you buy the rights to a city. All right, okay, and then yep. and then every. Uh, and like all the homeless people there, like you, there's like homeless shelters and stuff like that, like all along. And you, you make it 100% clear that if you live here, you will be like somewhat protected, but you will get pelted with water balloons like once a week. Just every single homeless person live in the homeless bunker. Once a week, a limo will drive past, select a singular homeless person to stand outside. They will get hit with a champagne water balloon. The water balloon will you have a hundred dollar bill taped to it. You do this, and every single one of your needs will be met for the foreseeable future. Yes! Please do not wander the streets on this day. Yes! Exactly! Perfect. Oh my goodness. We've- we've broken the system. We broke the system. It's easy to break. Oh my goodness. Dav, you're amazing for giving us the, uh, inspiration for this. Dav, you, you broke the system. We're so proud of you. Alright, let's see. Oh, which reminds me, we do still need to figure out a day to the three of us sit down and watch Yu-Gi-Oh together. True, we do. By the way, I've been working on, uh, on, on like, uh, bunch of stuff I'm playing. I have an interesting idea for Dad's Dual Spirit. I'll go over that later. Well, we'll do that off stream because that's kind of spoilers yeah, for everybody else. But, you know. Obviously. But um, I have... I'm, I'm just saying and just letting Dad know I have an interesting idea for you, buddy. 
I'm trying to think of stuff. Okay, so so the the poor poor guy that was invited over, he was just like oh my goodness, like the one girl who broke the toilet was hanging on him the entire time. Like Fuck. like full on like he got there and she ran up to him and just like wrapped her arms around him and refused to let go. It was it was not good. <laughs> that poor guy. Sorry. I was eating a corn dog in my mouth as well. Oh no, you good, you good. But still that poor guy. Oh my gosh. See, I don't normally yeah, no. do the college party thing, but when when we do, it's just I, I just don't. I just stand it's, there it's bizarre. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. Yeah, no. Uh, I don't know. I probably wouldn't do the college party shit either if I went to college. Um, I'm a very I'm, I'm a very uh, closed off individual. I am in too. my life. I just I, live I with rarely people. leave my house. I just live with By the people. way, I got it. I usually do. But I have finally gotten my own place living alone. And let me just tell you, it is glorious. Dude, I'm currently living alone and I understand. Exactly. Living alone, gang. Let's go. That's why I'm I mean, like okay, openly technically... telling the story. I wanted to tell it yesterday, but like they were still here and they were literally out in the hall and stuff. They would have heard me talking about it. But like, no, I they moved out, so. They moved out, so now no, now no one can stop you from spilling the beans. Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah. Oh, hey! Ah. Uh, okay, so I I'm going through a bunch of boxes of my stuff that Aurora sent me. Yeah. I haven't over until recently. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'll, it's a bunch of my stuff that I wasn't able to bring with me when I moved down here. Uh, <laughs> I have my jar of some bitches back. <laughs> I, I got my jar of some, did I ever show you the jar of some bitches? No. All right, here, hold on. Hold on, let me, uh, let me just. We're gonna do this on another layer, guys. Down. It's my jar of some bitches. I'm looking. Oh my goodness, it is! That's hilarious. Yeah. I love the jar of some bitches. It's a good jar. I got it at a Renaissance fair. I remember. I remember seeing it in your place when you lived near us. Yeah. Just sitting on the mantelpiece. Yeah. So I used to live in a really nice condo, and now I've. I've downgraded to a one-bedroom apartment, and I'm loving this even more so than the condo. Oh, true. So, a uh, few of you guys might uh, might not know exactly, other than a few people. Uh, but, so, Dylan and I met in high school. So, this is like high school yep. friend type of thing. And uh, Dylan plays Jaeger in Oral's Wrath. I, uh, I am hunter. I, uh, I do hunting. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, the, there's your little, little, you know, backstory and stuff. A little bit of Just it. Just counting down until I see Dav say, oh my god, it's Jaeger. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's Jaeger. I don't know if Dav is still here. Probably check. I can check if he's still here. You know. Either way. Oh yeah, he is. Uh. Right. I'm also uh, working on a bunch of the uh, of the decks for uh, the campaign right now. That's good. I'm um, basically uh, NPC decks or notable character decks. Ooh, okay. For the notable character decks, it's pretty fucking easy. I just have to work based off of a deck list. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I helped you find uh, Bakuras earlier. I remember that. Yep. It turns out I actually have a lot of Bakura cards. That's so fun. Yeah, I, I, it's pretty fucking easy for, to build stuff for, um, you know, Bakura, Weevil, Rex Raptor, Bones. 
gonna torture I'm poor Barnes. Actually, I feel kind of bad. Not, that man is going to get the crap beat I'm out just, of him. I'm telling you this right now, I'm not doing Bones' actual deck. Does it suck? It's fucking awful. Like, zombie decks in the mo in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! are fucking phenomenal. Bones' original zombie deck was terrible. Oh no. That's the worst. Because like, it's all normal monsters, and they all just have like mediocre attack points and no defense points. Oh my gosh. That kind of sucks. Yeah, but I'm making it work. Because I'm able to use a bunch of uh, modern zombie support, given how we're doing this. I'm able to just build him a deck from scratch. True. Ah, uh, but we, if we had and his old deck, then I could mop the floor with him easier! <sighs> no, I'm kidding, I'm joking. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? You given me an idea. He can upgrade You've his given... deck. Yeah. Uh. You'll, you'll see what the idea is when Duh, the time comes. Tetro, I've doomed us. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I've doomed us. I'm so sorry, guys. It's all my fault. <laughs> oh, if you, thought, if you thought Midnight could be an evil sky god. Oh, God. <laughs> Just wait till you see Jaeger behind the wheel. Jaeger behind the wheel! Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of stuff. Oh, okay. Do you want to talk about, uh, considering I'm working on this project at the moment, do you want to talk about, uh, Summerlin and Tom? Oh yeah, yeah. We can, we can talk about the old, uh, Call of Cthulhu gang. Yeah, considering I'm making an animation with them in it. So these characters come from uh, an old campaign that we were both in, done by midnight. Um, actually, actually, it was most of the people from the Orioles' Wrath campaign were in it. It just replaced Pope with uh, my ex. Yep. It was, it was really fucking fun. I was a bit of a toxic player back then, but I didn't really know what I was doing, so. I got better. You got better. You did get better. I could get significantly better. <clears throat> but yeah, no, the characters we came up with, though, I, I really fucking love. Yeah. It was set in the 1800s, like, actually utilizing, like, Red Dead Redemption 2's map and all that. Yeah, it was good stuff. Yeah, we, we were trying to get a, um, a reboot set up, but, uh, yeah, with the hiatus, it's Looking like that's not going to happen for a long time. Yeah. No. But, um, yeah, no. Still got the characters and still love them. Dude, I love Summerlin. Oh, yeah. I, okay, Tom Ryder is just basically the fucking definition of lawful evil dickhead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. Oh my goodness. That was so funny when we, we like stopped and we looked at each other and we're like, what's your character's alignment? Evil? <gasps> Summerlin's evil too! No wonder why they got along so well. Exactly. Oh, it's amazing. It's good stuff. You know one of my favorite things from that uh, from that original campaign was though? What? It was my favorite thing. What? I, I don't know how you feel about how it was handled, but I fucking loved it. Just because of uh, an interaction we had before it was revealed, but the introduction of Landry. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna so, straight up tell you, Landry, Summerlin never trusted Landry. Don't blame you. But, Summerlin's um, not a very trusting character in, to begin with, and like, some guy comes up, Hey, I know you have super magical powers and stuff, and I'm gonna make you get better at it. Alright, so... Since, uh, since we're never going back to that shit, I might as well tell all about what Landry was, right? Yeah. Basically, Landry was older than dirt. Yeah, I got that. I mean, that. like, generations old. 
Basically, he was a man who went so fucking insane, so fucking fast that he hit the sanity barrier, no clipped fucking through it, and he was basically able to access basically godly amounts of power through called Cthulhu's uh, fucking magic system without any cost because he's already in the negative. Mm. Oh, so that's what they you basically... would have done to Summerlin, wasn't it? Uh, not necessarily. His idea was basically to tr was basically to try and tra train you up as a protege. Mm -hmm. If he could have done that to you, he would have. If you would have let him, but Summerlin's not he, very but, trusting to begin a, with. A, you're not very trusting, and B, what happened to him is a fairly unique and circumstantial thing. Yeah. Oh, believe me, he's tried to do it with other people, and he's failed every time. Yeah, no, um, throughout the generations, Landry had actually taken on new names and faces, only landing on this weird fucking dirty witch doctor persona that he had during the 1800s, about 10 years before. And about five years, and for about, uh, after he would have, uh, changed locations and faces again. And do you want to know what I had chosen for his next thing to be? What? Uh, I, th I think I thought this was fucking hilarious. <laughs> he would have become Rasputin. That would be. He would have just that straight up been fucking that. Rasputin. That would have been fun. I had this idea of like during World War One, uh, Tom being hired by uh, Tom and the New World Security Company being hired by um. Uh, by the Tsar, him going in, speaking with the Tsar, meeting Rasputin, and it's taking about all of ten minutes to realize what the fuck he's talking to. Yeah, that's funny. Because, because Landry Rasputin just keeps dropping hints that he knows more than he, he's letting on. Overtly. <laughs> Summerlin sees him. Summerlin just stares him down. Oh god. Like, like you realize before, like, like Summerlin realized before Tom, Tom does, and Tom's just like. Summerlin, why are you fuck? breathing so angrily? Summerlin, what is up? Oh. Why are, why are you mag dogging this motherfucker? Oh. Oh, it's that fuck. God damn it, Landry! Exactly. Summerlin would be ready for murder again. <laughs> oh, Jesus I love fuck. OG Summerlin, but like remake Summerlin, my beloved oh, as well. Yeah. Reboot Summerlin and reboot Tom are more, are, in my opinion, a bit more fun. Yeah, yeah. So, so original Summerlin, he he was kind of he wasn't really the best of like people type of thing. He wasn't really a people person to begin with. He was kind of he was lawful evil. He wasn't really you know like he wasn't gonna help people. He, he didn't like helping people type of thing. And he was only here because like, you know, they had like a bounty on his head and they're like, you're actually really good. You, you know, you should join us. And Summerlin's like, you know what? I have nothing better to do. And then you guys kind of helped him like get rid of the bad guy and stuff like that, this and that, and, you know. Yep. But, but Reboot Summerlin is like, already like a felon, but like, he's not like super evil. He He's just kind of, really really wanted that man dead you know he's he's not even like lawful evil either he he's lawful neutral now Law yes as you lawfully as you lawful neutrally stole the man's skull out of his head i mean like lawful what a as, as the lawful neutral wizard lawful neutral cat lawful neutrally casts fucking fireball at the orphanage I wouldn't, because Tom is never going to be lawful fucking, like, lawful uh, neutral or anything like that. I love, I love the idea of, like, yes, this character is lawful neutral, murders a man in cold blood by stealing his skull. Apparently he's lawful neutral. Didn't he rip a man's skull out? 
Didn't he sneak in and murder a man? Now, as for uh, Tom's difference between reboot and uh, original, like I said, it was a bit of a toxic flare. I basically just made this guy overpowered in every sense of the fucking word. Yep. The reboot doesn't necessarily change his personality much. It more so nerfs him ability-wise. In the original, he was leading this um, fucking PMC that he was a part of. He was basically legally immune in the city they operated in, and his main magical ability was a gun that gave him the ability to turn invulnerable for brief periods of time, which was really fucking busted. Considering one of the ways I took out one of the Eldritch Abominations we were dealing with was hugging a bundle of dynamite and charging right at it. Yep. Reboot Tom, while still being the smarmy evil asshole that he was before, would have not been the leader of the PMC, but one of their top agents. As well as not having the invulnerability powers, but instead probability manipulation. I.e. a certain amount of charges a day to make any role successful. Or okay. not successful, if it's being used against someone. And if you went above these charges, the DM would get a charge to basically make any one of your rolls fail, and you could not stop it. Oh my really wish this version. Also, the interactions between Tom and Summerlin would have been very different between original and reboot. The original, they got along like fuck, like a fucking house on fire, but <laughs> nah, the uh, the reboot would have been a lot more rocky. Oh yeah, no, the reboot would have would have had it be like way more along the lines of like Summerlin was not gonna trust this man like at all. And Tom was not interested in friendship. He was interested in using Summerlin as a weapon. Yes. Basically, very, very diametrically opposed to each other. One of them did not trust the other. The other did not care for the other and just wanted a weapon. Yeah. They would eventually become friends, but it would be very fucking rocky leading to it. It would probably be the last fucking friendship that would form within the group. Yeah, Summerlin friending anybody in the group would be taking forever, but like, especially with Tom. Especially with Tom, because Jesus fucking Christ. Like, Tom is just... Tom's goals are money and power above all else, and he will step on anything to get what he wants. Yeah. Including anybody he's working with. Yeah. And, you know, someone having the ability to just kind of fucking phase through shit with his hands. That's a bit useful, don't you think? Yeah, just a bit of it. Yeah. I can make, I can probably weaponize that, given the fact that that boy literally ripped a man's skull out of his goddamn head. Summerlin still kept the, Summerlin wants that skull. I know, I know you guys took it from him. Summerlin wants that skull back. Like on Tom's desk the entire time. He's got like pens in the eye sockets. Summerlin like walks into his his office and just starts breathing angrily. What? Is it the air, is it the air conditioning? I can turn up the air conditioning. Can I get the stupid skull back? Oh, this. Yeah, it makes a real nice pen holder. That's my pen holder. I mean, I can get you a cup, but. Uh... You can have no, the can't. cup. I am wealthy beyond all get out. I don't need a cup. I can use whatever I want. <laughs> Summerlin has to be held back by literally anybody in the room. <laughs> it took three man catchers to stop him. It took three man catchers to stop him and, and Carl lost another kneecap. <laughs> three man catchers and six disposable soldiers later. <laughs> Summerlin can literally still steal people's kneecaps. I love this character so much. Oh, man. I really... Fu 
you know, we really need to like make this into like a like a series if we can't make it into a um into a game. We we need to start writing. We'll make it into point. anything, yeah. I really hope I yeah. get like a good grade on this project because if I do it'll get put in the showcase. Oh hell yeah. And I don't know if there's anybody there in the showcase who are looking for new filmmakers or anything, so you know, there could be a chance. Hey, if it, if you get a great opportunity out of this, then that'll, that's just the icing on the cake. It is. I don't know. I just hope so. Something good comes from it. But, you know, it's going to be a fun uh, animation nonetheless. Also, I want to send this to midnight when it's when it's all done. Oh, yeah, definitely. Hopefully, hopefully I, midnight will like it. Let me check something real quick. Because I sent midnight links to the um, to Zelda stuff that you were making. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it still just says deliver. Hold on, there's somebody at my door, I think. Okay. Uh, uh, Martin? Uh, no. No. Okay, the, the, the jokes? And the car? Uh, I don't know anything about it, man. Okay, sorry, man. What? Uh... Dude asking for Martin about a truck and a car. You don't own a car. I don't have a driver's license. You know. Eh, I don't want to make more yeah, no. for myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ada hasn't even uh, opened up that message yet. It was sent a while ago. So. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, you know. Oh my goodness, I always start with the hat and I didn't. What? Hmm. I pressed the wrong button. Why is there an option for just burn maple leaves? Because I think it's funny. It doesn't, doesn't... do anything. You just yep. burn 250 maple leaves. Yep. You should make another one of those. You should make another one of those that's more expensive than the end stream one. Burn the house down, maple leaves. Ten million, just, just throw away ten million leaves. Ten million leaves. Leave me alone. I must make leaf jokes for the next twenty minutes. <laughs> Everything must be leaf referenced. I don't, I don't know what the fucking uh, what the lead into the joke was, but the pun was "Leave me alone, I'm bushed." Leave me alone, I'm bushed. Oh my goodness. Hey, you ever realize that Zuko in uh, Last Airbender never actually has the last name? Yeah, he's he has a he's the prince. Yes, but. Royal families still have last names. Yeah, but like a lot of times they just straight up like the country. So what is his name? Zuko Fire Nation? <laughs> yeah, probably. His, his name is Zuko Fire Nation. Yeah, probably. Aang doesn't have a last name. Yeah, but he was a monk. That's different. They were separated from family. I don't think Katara or Sokka had a no, last no, name. No, that I think, now that I think about it, yeah, no, most of the characters didn't have last Only name. really Toph. Why have... Yeah, Tom was the... Th th Tom. Toph was the only one. Tom definitely has a last name, and it's fucking Ryder. Yep. Do you remember Summerlin's last name? Elwood. Yes. Yeah, no, um, do you want to know where Tom Ryder's name came from? Yeah, tell me. Because right, I have so, theories, but I don't think you've ever told me. All right, and this isn't like um, like uh, where the name came from in lore is like me coming up with a name. I want to hear your theories before I say it, though. Well, I was just thinking like, I don't know, Flynn Rider. Nope. So when I was, um, when I first started playing Red Dead Online, right? Yeah. I made my character and I wanted to write a story based off of the things my character got up to. Mm -hmm. My original idea 
was that he would be an outlaw. Because he had red hair, he'd be called the Red Rider. And just to make it a little bit funnier, I gave him the name of Thomas Ryder, spelled differently from how the... But the last name spelled differently from how Red Rider would have been. But just so it's a little bit... You get what I was going for. It yeah, was I, funny see, that I, see, I see it. I see it. Title was Rider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. I know you helped me name this animation, and I completely forgot what the name was. Uh, fuck, so did I. I think I wrote it down. I probably wrote it down. Let's let's just chop it up to that. If not, I'll message you later today or tomorrow. And the last person to be talking about when you need to remember something. No, you're fine. You help me name things. Yeah, I don't want to call it that. Uh, uh, Frank. It, it, it's Frank now. It's Frank now. It's Frank Somebody now. Somebody named everybody's projects something. Uh. I forget what it was, but somebody named everybody's projects, and we kind of made it a meme in our art class. Um, another thing that we made in our meme, in our uh, made a meme out of in our art class was pre-brick. So it was like brick, but it it was pre-brick. So it was before brick. So it was like it was like concrete powder. <laughs> it's pre-brick. Did I ever tell you about? Um... Uh, about the original Archie's relationship with Bricks. No. So in the campaign where Archibald Chadwick Coxwain the Third came from, Coxwain. there was a running. Somebody threatened to throw a brick at him, and that just became a running joke. If he ever got a little too sassy, somebody would threaten to throw a brick at him. If he ever got confident, they would throw a brick at him. Oh my gosh. They would, they would threaten to throw bricks at him. No. Gets frightened, hides in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Well, it was it was more Archie noises than actual speech when that happened. But yeah. Oh my gosh. I think I think <laughs> if Archie met Summerlin, I think he would just make Archie noises the moment Summerlin walks up. Uh, canonically, they have met oh, because they have. Uh, okay. the original Archie has met the original Tom. Archie walks up, Summerlin doesn't even say anything, just looks at him. <laughs> Play for me! Stay the fuck away! Oh, you should hear the stories behind this little one. Oh my goodness. Summerlin with the... Yep. With the... You should hear some of the stories behind this one. They say he ripped a man's spine clean out of his back without breaking the skin. And when I say they say he did it, I've seen him do it. I watched him do oh, it myself. I asked him to do it once. No hesitation in that boy. No hesitation. Summerlin's a I won't hesitate type of guy. I will not hesitate to remove your spine. <laughs> He'll put it in his collection. <laughs> How many full skeletons does Summerlin have? Okay, I'm gonna straight up tell you, my goal was to straight up get an entire skeleton, because Midnight told me that if I got an entire skeleton, then Summerlin could bring it to life and, you know, control it. I'm just imagining it would constantly make skeleton puns. <sighs> Don't worry, I have a bone to pick with you, steals a man's bone. Summerlin, not again! What is a skeleton's favorite snack? Go out and guess. Ribs. Ribs. Spare ribs. Fuck. Ribs. I love that one so much. If I find it again, I'm gonna send it to you. I I fucking love that shit. It's amazing. It's so good. My screen is so dirty. I need to clean this thing. Yeah, I know. Oh my goodness. Just somewhere in exists. Archie. Scared. Archie, fear. Fear. 
really hope I get my project in the showcase. I hope so too. It's it's gonna be good. I already have one project in the showcase. I get to dress up all fancy. I'm not gonna stream that day. Cause I get to dress up all fancy and I'm gonna go with the fam and it starts at five and that's usually when I end stream. Just the entirety of the stream is just you getting ready. Jesus. Nah, dude, that doesn't take that long. It's more along the lines of the drive. Then the entirety of the stream shall be the drive. Or hey, maybe you can give me the keys to the fucking channel, and I'll just have a rambling stream. God, no. No. Your viewership drops to below zero. I view everyone stops following. No. No. Don't worry, it was a great stream. Don't worry, it was a great stream. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry, it was a great stream. I ruined everything by talking about my political views. No, please don't. Oh my gosh. That stuff's not allowed on the channel, man. Too much. No. No. If there's one thing I will refuse to do in anything like this, it's talk about my political views. Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh, did I tell you I have like I'm I'm making like a two year plan to like get a film and stuff. Really? Yes. Okay, so I don't know how much I've talked to you about this, but my favorite superhero is Firestorm. And I, I wanna can tell based on how often you bring them up. I love my boy. I don't think I I don't think I showed you as many of my like drawings from like high school, but I used to draw them a lot. You know, maybe I shouldn't have grabbed this bowl of fruit. Oh well. But still, I should have shown you how much I, I used to draw them a lot. But um, I I want to I want to I want to make Firestorm movie, and because like there's not enough Firestorm content out there, and I'm I'm sitting in the corner I mean, watching I'll... watching an old 60s show with crappy animation just to see my boy so would it be an anime the movie you have in mind if you just could make whatever you want would it be an animated movie or would it be a live action i would want it to be animated but considering how people are about animated movies it would end up being live action so i've been trying to figure out how to do some of his costume like practical instead of like CGI. I would, say, I would say push for animation because DC movies, they tend to have a better track record for animation. Yeah, I know. Besides, if you do manage to get in there with Warner Brothers and they'll let you make the movie, they have a fucking amazing repertoire of animated movies. And I feel like you could do a trilogy of movies based off of this guy who yeah. really fucking put your mind. I know, I've already written up like a trilogy list, honestly. Also, 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 my mom's old boss, who is, like, great, and, like, he, he's, like, like, he's known me since I was younger type of thing. Uh, he, he roomed with somebody who's, like, up there. Like, he, his roommate in college was somebody who is now, like, up there in D.C. Hell yeah. So I can get in if I really, really try. I have faith in you. I think that if anybody can do this, it's you. Thank you. Yeah, no. I've been reading comics and I've been reading like my Firestorm comics and stuff to this morning. I've been trying to find more of them because I know I'm still missing parts of his story. I know I'm still missing things, but still. So, other than Firestorm, what are your other top two and your top three superheroes? My other top two and my top three superheroes? Uh, okay. Yeah. We got... Firestorm is number one, is two, and three. Uh, Red Robin is two, and Superboy is three. Good choices. Good fucking choices. Yes. You wanna know what mine are? Tell me. It is... And... This is in no particular order because these three keep swapping around. Yeah. yeah. Spider-Man, Shazam, and Ooh. Super uh, Superman. Ooh, ah, uh, Superman's great. 
Ah, uh, and you have Shazam I... in there too. He's one of the, the the children that Superman adopts, and like tries to look after, but not without adopting them. Actually. Exactly. Like like fucking Jimmy Olsen. Except for that one time he did adopt Jimmy Olsen and then was a complete another tool to him. Yeah. Did you, ever, did you ever read that? Was I, I can't remember if it was a Golden Age or a Silver Age comic, but I don't think there was I've an old ass. Yet. There was an old ass comic where Superman adopts Jimmy Olsen, <laughs> but he gets like a prediction from his Superman supercomputer in his fucking Fortress of Solitude that something bad would happen involving his son. But it was spelled for the. It was spelled. As in the fucking big ball of gas in the sky, but he read it as his child. So, almost immediately after adopting Jimmy Olsen, he just starts being a complete tool to drive him away. Aww. And it's the funniest shit ever because Superman's just a massive dick. Yeah. Like, Jimmy Olsen gets him, like, a fucking, like, a fucking robe or something, and he just burns it with his heat vision, saying, This is a shit gift, son, go away. Oh! So mean. Old school Superman was a dick when he wanted to be, and it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish they, I wish they'd bring back Superman's little fucking mischievous streak every so often. Aw, oh, dude, same. It would've been so good. It was no, 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 they, they, they're all over here like, oh, we're gonna make him, like, god mode or some BS like that, I don't know. Well, no, like, that's fine, but just have him be a bit of a stinker every so often. There was actually one movie, uh, somewhat recently, like, when the, within the past 10, 20 years, that, uh, actually did bring back his mischievous streak in a really fun way. How so? Basically, um... Superman's dealing with this like new group of superheroes that are really fucking cool and badass and they kill and things like that and that but like people are praising them for actually dealing with the problems in a permanent way wishing that Superman would do this right and they eventually end up turning on Superman and fighting him right Superman's struggling against them because he's really pulling his punches trying to get them to calm the fuck down yeah. They're just trying to push him to kill. And eventually it seems like Superman snaps. So he just starts systematically one by one killing them off. Oh no! Completely fucking insane. Like, at one point they're in the middle of the fucking city. There's only two of them left. Don't worry, we've, we've got each other's back. And then one of them's just fucking gone. The other's asking, dude, where did you go? And you can just hear Superman saying, Orbit! He went into orbit at Mach 5. Oh no! That's hilarious. Like, it, it ends up that he wasn't actually killing them. He and like a bunch of fucking robots that he had on hand for like this uh, Fortress of Solitude were basically just fucking blitzing them at hyper speed, knocking them out and moving them out of the way so that um, it would seem like they had died. Oh, this God. is basically just to give them and to a lesser extent the world an idea of what it would be like if Superman just fucking snaps. Because if Superman snaps, then there's no more anything. True. Very true. Oh my goodness. Oh, Jesus. Have you played uh, Injustice 2? I have uh, not second one? played Injustice yet. Uh, Firestorm's actually in the second one. I know. Wait, does it... was I forget if it was uh, Jason Firestorm, or was it... Jason and the Professor. I, I don't remember who. I, I'm pretty sure it's Jason and the Professor. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the most well versed on uh, Firestorm personally, but uh, basically, he and Blue Beetle are two new heroes uh, being trained up by Batman after the fall of the regime of what you know that Superman built up after Lois Lane dies. Yeah. So it's basically just. It, like he and Blue Beetle are just fucking bros during that during the entirety of the fucking game, fighting off Superman and Brainiac and all that. And it's, yeah, it's just fun. That's fun. Yeah, oh, I would say like I I enjoy all of the 
Firestorm dynamics a lot. I, they're all really fun. They all have their own little charm to them. I've, I, of course, have my favorites, but, like, still. Uh, what, what is your favorite Firestorm dynamic? Uh, so, so my favorite one is the first one, and that is mainly because they have a cute father-son relationship, which is Ronnie and the Professor. Uh, Ronnie and Jason have, like, a enemies to friends type of dynamic, which is really cute. But you can't beat the father-son relationship that they uh, had. Uh, my personal favorite relationship that I've seen in there was the one from Batman the Brave and the Bold. Ooh, yes. Where it's not a prof where he's not a professor, he's a fucking gym teacher. Aww. So basically, like, the kid is the smart one who's you know, very methodical and thinking things through, not wanting to end things with violence. But then the fucking teacher is just like, dude, you can't solve this shit with smarts. Just fucking hit it. Just hit it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The professor's always been the more aggressive one, let's be honest. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Oh my goodness. There was one time that, like... No, like... Like, he was just a certified dumbass in this. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Oh my goodness. There was one time in the in the comics where I uh, he was like Okay, so there's one time with the professor and Ronnie and uh Superman was out uh out of it for the time being and they needed to, you know, fix some stuff. So they pretty much kidnap the professor and Ronnie. Ronnie's out cold at the moment. And the professor does not want to be there. So when Ronnie wakes up and hears the situation, he's like, Prof, we gotta help them. And he's like, no, they kidnapped us. They kidnapped us. We shouldn't be going to the authorities. And he's like, Prof, they need our help. He's like, fine. No, <laughs> no, we need, we need to fucking, we need to beat the shit out of these guys. Prof, we need to, to we prof, need. Prof, we need please. To help. No, no, we're, we're fighting them. No. Yes. No. Violence. It's really it funny because, like, violence. it's really funny because, like, they're talking to the professor and then Ronnie walks in and they're all, like, hiding behind <laughs> They know. They know their dynamic. Violence solves all of our problems. Remember that. Violence isn't the answer. It's the question and the it's answer the is yes. The question and the answer is yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, no. Words to live by and die by. True. Very true. Yeah, no. I was uh, rereading. Well, I say rereading. I finally hunted down um, Darkest Day, which is the one where a bunch of them come back to life. Oh, yeah, with the black, uh, with the black rings, right? Yeah, that one's fun. Yeah, Batman's still missing, dead type of thing at that time. Not anymore. Well, no, at that time it was. At the time. Everybody was still calling Tim no, crazy I, and stuff. I, I, was, I was talking about him being resurrected by a black ring. But... Oh yeah, he did get resurrected for a little bit. Resurrected. I'm sorry, we had to do air quotes and stuff this whole time. He was- he was resurrected for like five minutes, not even. Well, yeah, because you can't fucking do that shit to Batman. He's fucking Batman. Dude, dude, dude. Death is scared of Batman. I- I don't even, like... He gets brought back, and then they go, Okay, alright, we're done here. And then they put him back in the box. That's literally what they did. Oh, crap. Why did you do that? Put him back. You do that, put him back. He's gonna kill us all. He's he's already dead. <laughs> you don't know Batman like I do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Jesus. You know. You know something I find hilarious about Batman? What? This isn't like a canon thing, but this is more just like um. Okay. Fan. You know how. Like, hardcore Batman fans are always saying that, oh no, Batman would flatten anybody with enough prep time. Yeah. I, I, I love seeing, like, hearing that, 
and then just directing them over to fucking death battle where he's lost four out of the five matches he's been in. Yeah, I don't, I don't really trust death battle as much anymore. I feel like they've done it right, but okay. I feel like they got every single one with Batman correct. Why is that? Because death battle is not about prep time. It's about, oh yeah, these guys just came across each other. Now they fight. Oh, true. Hmm. The only one that he could beat with no prep time was Captain America, and that's just because Batman's a better physical fighter. Mm, true. Again, Spider-Man, the Spidey sense shuts him down, and he's and Spidey can also physically. Like Sp Spider-Man has a comparable intellect. He's faster. He's stronger, and the Spidey sense shuts down stealth. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Sense. Very true, very true. Yeah, I feel like a lot of them. I feel like. Yeah, if he if he had prep time, but like if he was just walking along the street type or doing something like that, he would usually like. Exactly. Even the ones where they gave him like the super fucking, even the one where they gave him the super fucking crazy bat suits, like the hell bat armor. Yeah. He was going up against Iron Man, who had similar, if not greater, power leveled suits. And okay, that one I feel like Batman would have flattened that man. No, I I feel like they got that one right just because like I feel like it's more probable for Tony's suits to out edge Batman's suits. Just because Tony has more experience building armor specifically tailored to fight anything. True. Plus Tony's suits for those power levels, you know, the ability to fight gods, don't come with the drawback of nearly killing him in the process. Hell, take Tony's Godbuster armor that's comparable to the Hellbat suit. Everybody that's everybody that says the Hellbat would beat the Godbuster armor always compares it to Batman rocking up and beating the shit out of the dark side. What they don't say is that Batman lost that fight with Darkseid. <laughs> he straight lost. up fucking lost. Oh my gosh. He did. Tony, when fighting a similar power level uh, person in that same fucking armor, he did not lose. True. And he true. wasn't nearly crippled in the process. True, true. I don't know. I know they always say there's a bunch of different ways things could have gone. Yeah, there are a bunch of different ways, but like consistency is the thing. And I feel like Tony, if it came down to just a straight up fight with no prep time and access to all their currently existing armors, Tony. Oh, yeah, just dude, edged. dude. I was thinking, like, there was this one time when somebody uh, heard. That one time, Bane broke into the Batcave and beat the crap out of Bruce. Oh, jeez. I fucking love that Bane, the enemy that's basically meant to be just all muscle for bats, was also one of the first people to deduce his identity. <laughs> Tim still found it first! <laughs> I read the comic, I, I know, I know Tim found it first. Tim was already Tim brought Drake, at that point uh, time thing. <laughs> Little eight year old Tim. Drake Tim. First. <laughs> Little baby eight <laughs> just, year I'm just, old. Oh, I'm just gosh. imagining Batman's just sitting at the fucking uh, bat computer, typing away on it, just thinking to himself, well, I lost another fucking Robin. Yeah, it's been a week, I should probably go find another one. No, no. What are the odds I'll what are the odds I'll find another helpless orphan anytime soon? And the camera just pans slightly to the left. Oh my gosh, <laughs> no! Dude, do you know Tim's backstory? I don't. Okay, Tim so... Tim Drake is the Robin I know the least about. Okay, Tim Drake's my favorite, so I can tell you everything. I can... I can muster you. Perfect. Alright, so Tim... Tim was made after Jason, of course. Now, the thing is, is that uh, when they made him, the rule was... I'm gonna quote this, my favorite quote, alright? Okay. They wanted to make a character with no angst. No angst at all. Not a single shred of angst. That did not last long at all, man. It's hilarious. 
Batman is the only one allowed to be angsty here. No, 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 no. They wanted him to have his own family. They wanted him to have his own stuff. They wanted him to, like, you know, do his own they things. Wanted him, they wanted him to be basically a superhero without the baggage of being a superhero, yeah. i.e. dead family and horrible backstory. Dude, dude, but it's so okay. funny. It's so funny. After the fact. Okay, it's so funny because literally, literally, within the first week of being Robin, before he got the suit type, like, like, he got the suit and, like, his, they killed his mom off, and then they, and then, like, like, crippled his dad, and then, like, oh my gosh, and his dad was in, like, a coma for, like, a couple of months. <laughs> Jesus. And that's the easy part. And then, and then, like, um, so, so during Identity Crisis, this one really big one where a bunch of characters die. Um, so, so Batman's not Batman. I'm sorry. Superman's family gets like threatened. So he, so Tim and Bruce were gonna go and help out over there, keep a little extra security, while Tim was away helping, you know, Superman's fam and stuff. Um, his dad gets attacked and his dad gets murdered. Jesus. And then there's straight up more. There's oh, more. No. How is there? How is there more? There's more. There's always more. This is Tim. There's always more. This is Tim Drake. They just decided to. They just decided to beat him up as shit went instead of giving him the backstory. Okay. So so basically, whose dad got murdered? Tim Drake's. We're talking about uh, Robin and stuff. Hello, Dove. Uh, Dove. Hello, Bido. How you doing, my dude? Um, so basically... Yours. Oh, no! That's right, I'm coming for you. <laughs> don't hurt people, man. Don't hurt my chat. Anyways, um... Uh, so basically... What, what happened was, was that, um... Where was I? Uh, working on your final. No, no, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. I'm just a, I'm just a dick. I know. A dick who needs to refill his cat's food and water. Ah, Toby. <laughs> okay. Um, where was I? Anyways, so there's more. There's always more with Tim. Uh, what yeah, happens was more. I'm not good at English. Oh, you're good. No worries. Um, so what happened was, was that, uh, Tim, Tim's dad gets murdered, and then what happens is, is that, who's the other ver person in VC? That is Dylan, who plays yeah, Jaeger in Oral's I play Wrath. Jaeger, I play Jaeger in Oral's Wrath. I play Tom in this little animation mm -hmm. that uh, she's working on for her finals. I play the Dungeon Master in Yu-Gi-Oh! Diverted Dimensions. That hasn't happened yet. Yeah. I played the antagonist to my own life. I see, yes. Um, let's see, but, but what happens is, is that, uh, after after Tim's dad gets murdered, his his best friend gets murdered too, which is which is Superboy, which is uh, Connor Kent. Superboy or Superboy Prime? Superboy. Ah. Fun. I have not heard your voice in ages. Wild man, wild. Yeah. So you know. So you know. So. Superboy gets murdered. Tim is not a happy camper because Superboy and Tim were like glued at the hip the entire time. Like they were they were besties. They were besties, man. It was oh my goodness. Best friends. D, D hasn't happened in a while. Yeah, we know. It's fine. It's on hiatus. Yeah. It'll be back eventually. Eventually. But but because of this hiatus, it's also why I'm working on Yu-Gi-Oh! Diverted Dimensions. 
another D and D campaign that we're gonna put be the doing. Break shit on hold while I uh, advertise. Something I've always wanted to do was uh, the full Yu-Gi-Oh experience of fighting for your life in a fucking children's card game. And now that I can actually run a fucking Call of Cthulhu campaign, I can do this. Yeah, I'll help you with the Call of Cthulhu stuff later. You know, but um, yeah, right now I'm just building decks. And I'm working on my final. <laughs> also, if we ever hit the goal, considering this is going to be done tomorrow type of thing, if we ever hit the goal, this is going to be in the pile of student films that we'd watch. Beautiful. I just realized that means that a bunch of people are going to get to see my horrid voice acting. Dude, your voice acting was fine. Oh my gosh. Oh. Fuck. Knocked over a bowling pin. <laughs> okay. Don't ask. Not asking. Don't ask why I have a bowling pin. Not asking. Just gonna laugh. I can, I can feel you asking in the chat. Stop typing. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, anyways, yeah, no, it'll be fun. Yeah, this is also going in my, uh... Well, apparently, uh, apparently you need to make a posture check. I need to do a posture check? Okay, let me stop slouching and I'll sit up straight. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, you mean the sub goal you get uh, of you getting five more subs? Yeah, that's the sub goal. Oh, hey! Um, I'm also unpacking things right now. I just found the champagne dagger. Ah! Oh my goodness, when I, when I, I'm going home on Tuesday, uh, I'll get a picture of the dagger that you got me and I'll show everybody. Yeah, but I, I've, I found my champagne dagger. Oh, it's a dagger nice. with the word champagne written on it. That's a fun word. What does it mean? It's me mispronouncing champagne like fucking Zap Brannigan from Futurama. Ah. Understandable. Oh, and my old school cowboy revolver. Ah. I heard the click. Sorry, yeah. Yep, I'm currently murdering things. Oh my goodness. Like I said, Beto Master, I'm coming for your dad. Jesus. D it's all jokes, Minecraft, you know, the usual. We yeah, have to say Minecraft. that, we have to say that, we have to say that. Yeah, in Minecraft. Like, like that one fucking VTuber, I'ma shoot up a Walmart in Minecraft. Please don't say that on my stream. Sorry, my bad. Sorry, I don't think things through before I say them. I know. Most things that come out of my mouth are as unfiltered as the power of unfiltered. Dad. Here. Sorry. That was a pretty strong. I, I, I could feel you recoiling as I did that. Oh my gosh. He is the power. Well, I have the power of God and anime on my side. Sobs. Okay. Sorry about any uh, background noise you're getting off of me, by the way. Like I said, I'm also working on unpacking things. No, you good. Oh, I never finished my thing with Tim. All right, give me a sec. Yes, uh, yes Tim thing. And yeah, we got distracted. Please. That's fine. So, so, so pretty much his bestie gets murdered. They were, they were glued at the hip, literally type of thing. They, they did like so much together. They, they were besties, your honor. This is, this is when we got the classic, uh, Robin suit that's black and red and yellow. The, the black and red was Superboy's colors. And he changed his, uh, suit to being Superboy's colors in honor of Superboy. You know what? 
But That's sweet. I know, That's right? So sweet. Which is really upsetting because a lot of newer Robin suits just kind of take Tim's color scheme and don't... And, like, put it on the others. The others. Cough, cough, cough. Damien Wayne. Cough, cough, cough. cough also Dick. Cough, cough. And sometimes Jason. Look. It's a Look, good color scheme. all I'm saying is that the Joker added more red. Alright? The Joker added more red, so you're fine. True. Very true. <laughs> and whatever paint was realize. on the crowbar. Whatever paint was on the crowbar, oh my gosh. But yeah, no. Um, oh my goodness, at that one DC series where they gave, <laughs> gave uh, Jason dual-wielding crowbars. No! Jesus. They made him dual-wield crowbars. No. I won't be able to get him. He has... Oh yeah, I just read that. I already read that. They made him dual wield yeah. crowbars. No. They made him dual wield the weapons that murderized him. Yeah, I don't know. Who do you think? Wait, whose crowbar do you think had a bigger impact on media as a whole? Uh, fucking Joker or uh, Gordon Freeman? Joker. Fair enough. Considering, considering, like, it was one of the unspoken rules that, you know, nobody revives Jason. That is until Superboy Prime broke out of some kind of stasis bubble and uh, fucked up a lot of shit. Which, by the way, I only recently learned that the only reason that uh, Jason Todd got revived in canon originally was because of some new 52 shit involving Superboy Prime punching reality. <laughs> I like what they did with it after New 52, though. Oh, no, yeah, I, I completely agree. By the way, here's a question for you. How long did Jason Todd's beating last? Um... I don't remember. I think it was two hours. It was ranging, it depends on the continuity, but it usually ranges anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people, though, who only played fucking uh, Arkham, uh, Arkham Knights, thinks that it went on for months. Oh, hmm. No, that, that's months, a Tim. The month, no, the months of beating went on to make the fucking Arkham Knight not red hood oh true, true true months of beating and torture makes arkham knight two or hours joker of beating jr. makes red hood. or joker jr if it depending on that's tim drake yeah i know depending on the robin depending what do you think would have oh uh speaking of robins uh, <laughs> Five subs, it'll only be 20 bucks. Thing. Oh no, I don't know. Unless if you really want to see my final film as well as a bunch of other stuff. Maybe after the uh, after the finals, you could maybe post it onto the YouTube channel. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Honestly, it, this, this is looking pretty good. Not gonna lie. But, uh, so, here's a question for you. What do you think Red Hood actually was? Like, who do you think Red Hood really was? What do you mean? Not Red Hood, um, Red X. From Teen Titans. That was, that was, that was, that was Dick. Right? No. Well, the original one was, but somebody broke in afterwards, stole the suit, and started being his own version of Red X. I don't know. Do you think that was who they wanted to be, like, Jason or something? I don't a lot of people say that they think it. It, a lot of people say they think it was Jason Todd, but I have my own theory, and this is not backed up by any evidence. I just think it's cool. What? The second Red X is a League of Assassins clone of Dick Grayson that they trained up to kill Dick Grayson, assume his place, and get to Batman. Oh, that'd be cool. However, the clone wanted to do his own thing, broke out 
and stalked Dick Grayson for a while after he became a Titan. He witnessed the entirety of the Red X shit, even down to him seeing where it got locked up, and luckily for him, Robin used biometric locks. Oh, true. So he, so he now has his own identity. That's fun. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. Do whatever he wants. Dances around in a little Ralph fit. Eh? <laughs> Guess the outfit starts boogieing down. <laughs> Dances around in little outfit. Look at me! Oh my gosh. <laughs> I never finished Funky my Tim stuff. rant. I never finished my Tim rant. Sorry. Sorry, I keep getting you distracted. I know, Continue. I know. Okay, so so his best friend gets murdered. That's all big sand and stuff like that. Then his girlfriend gets murdered. That's also all big sand and stuff. Like, like Bruce, like, runs into him at, like, the, the, on one of the roof. And Bruce takes the mask off in the middle of Gotham. And he's like, all right, Tim, we have to have a serious talk. And Tim's just standing there like, oh, oh no. Type of thing. Oh, no. And, oh, and... No. He tells him that uh, Stephanie has been murdered. She faked her death. She actually faked her death. But like this still, this still messed with Tim because she didn't like tell him and she didn't tell anybody. Tell him. Cough. What? Yeah, if, you, if you're gonna fake your death, you don't fucking tell people. Vido gifted one tier sub to Vido. Oh my goodness. I gifted 23 subs. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Vital, for the gifted sub! I hope Dov likes it. Nice, nice, nice. I wish I had a gifted sub. I could use a sandwich. I could also use a sandwich. Uh, I should probably find out if there's a subway nearby. Oh, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. Um, going back to my I little rant. Yes, yeah, so that we don't get distracted for a fifth time. For a fit time, yes, yes, yes. So, so then after that, oh, I gifted one of them. Yeah, you gifted. Yeah, it said one. Gifted a. <laughs> Yay, we're at six. Here we can update it. We can try and get it to update at least. Boop. I'm sorry. I'm distracted. Give me a second. At least I didn't do it this time. It's being a butt. It doesn't want to update today. Yeah, it's just being a butt today. Oh, I gifted one to myself. You gifted one to to Dav. I'm sorry, did I say Bido? The worst. Um, let's see. Um, okay, let me let me get back to my my little rant here because I, I think I'm getting distracted again. Um, basically, I think or you know. I know I'm getting distracted again. I say distracted. We're talking about subs. Um, but after that, uh, after Stephanie faked her death too, what happened was was that. Um, Batman got murdered as well. So so Tim has lost his dad, his stepmom, his also his stepmom dies too. She just kind of it was an accident, but she also dies. And they were actually really close and it was really cute when they were together type of thing. Um well, that's why she had to die. Yeah, she was she was too good of a mother. So, you know, and then and then uh his best friend dies, his his girlfriend dies, Batman dies, and the only thing that he has like clinging to his like like clinging to type of thing is uh the fact that like what was it? The only thing he has mentally like clinging to left at this moment in time is the fact that like he has Robin and you know what happens to that? Uh, he no longer has it. Dick gives it to Damien. Oh, fuck. Of course he does. He gives it to Damien. And and Tim's just like, what the heck, man? That's like the last thing I had. Now oh, what am I? 
Red Robin. No. I, I gotta say, that... You know, as much as I fucking... I, I love... Tim Drake. I, I gotta say, that is... That is a weak fucking name for continuation off of Robin. It really is. It's kind of cute though because he never lot like he never let go of the Robin title because Bruce said that he never had to let go of the Robin title. He's the only one that never had to let go of it. Yeah, he was the only one who never had to let go of it because it was like his. Oh hey. Hey, it's that uh, better fucking card, uh, better card map that I had. See, I, I, I opened it up, was looking at it. It's, it's actually like a cardboard one. I flip it over, seal of Calcos. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, no, he was the uh, only one who didn't have to give up the Robin title, which is really cute and wholesome. But like, also, Bruce, also, did. Don't be a, don't don't go with your namesake, please. I'm gonna call you a he's Richard. Be, he's being a Richard. He's being a Richard. Dick, stop being a Richard. Thou shalt inhale a satchel of Richards. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, I found my board with a bunch of nails in it. Nice. You may be wondering why I have a board with a bunch of nails in it. No, no, that's normal. Violence. Violence is why. Oh my goodness. I'll put this next to the meme spoon. Good, good, good. Oh, hey, it's my scrap iron cane that I made from a piece of metal I found in a parking lot. Oh, that's cool. You may be wondering why I have a scrap iron cane that I made from a piece of metal in a parking lot. Nope, totally normal. Violence. Put this next to the meme spoon as well. Oh my goodness. Anyways, um, Tim's the only one who believes that Bruce is still alive. He is correct on this. Bruce is still alive. He ends up losing his spleen trying to save, like, trying to find evidence. Because what had happened was, was that Dick had told everybody that Tim was, like, losing it and stuff. And, um... You know, Tim had to, you know, Hi. find Bruce. So he did it alone, and he lost a spleen while finding Bruce. I'm just imagining it wasn't like he got it ripped out or anything. He just kind of casually lost it and realized it like a week later. No, 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 no. He, he was stabbed in the spleen, and he lost it because it was completely impaled. Yeah, no, I, I know, but I just think it's funnier that he's just looking around his apartment like, where did I put that damn spleen? Where did I put that spleen, man? He doesn't actually tell anybody either. That's the worst part. He doesn't tell anybody he lost his spleen. How do you... I mean, would you tell somebody that you lost your spleen? Well, considering you... that's his family... But then again, the entire right. family kind of betrayed him, and, you know, like, Jason tried to kill him again, and, like, you know, the usual. So, like, yeah, I don't think hey, I, I found see two why. Of the, uh, Comic -Con, I found two of the Comic-Con guys from the time we went to Comic-Con. What? Remember when we went to Comic-Con? Yeah, don't say which one, I, but, yeah. I'm not going to say. Thank you. But yeah, I, I found the guides for that. Oh, you found the guides! Oh, oh my goodness. I pulled out my I one of my costumes going. the other day. I pulled out one of my costumes the other day, and what had happened was was that I had left the like con thing on the costume still. So like <laughs> because I I tied it to my belt because I I didn't want to lose it while I was walking around. Oh, I get you. Yeah, no. So so I went and I found it. It was still like tied to my stuff. So yeah, I understand. I want to go to another con. You know, there's actually one uh, where I am uh, sometime next year. You want to fly down here for a visit? Probably. That'd be fun. Yeah. 
I can uh, give you the details after the stream. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. How's this? I'm gonna straight up tell you, I feel like I've done like barely anything on my project right now. Hey, another one of those D6s for my uh, dice. I'm looking nice. for that. Nice. Uh, so, what all have you uh, gotten done so far? Since I haven't actually been watching the stream, I've just been talking. Yeah, yeah, so I have got. And that's it. Apparently, the rest of the stream went missing, and I have no idea where it is. So, thank you for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you all next time. Bye!